I've been doing this job a long time. People like to talk about the targets. I think it made him feel better. Why don't you care who the guy is? They never got what it was really all about. Which was, in 10 minutes, they're not gonna be anybody. So I got to ask you, Michael, given that this is a movie about dementia, um, I saw it at TIFF and I thought you did something really interesting with the way that it was done because you really never know what Knox's plan is for most of the movie. You kind of put us in the position of we, we really have no idea what his motivations are. And I thought that was kind of an interesting trick to pull off in a film noir. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, the uh, <laughs> well, Every time I hear this, I think, oh, man, what was I thinking? Uh, it was a lot and uh, it took me a while to say yeah because I you, there's no sense in trying something if you don't think you can really pull this off so but the way I described this movie and, and was describing it to people was uh, and I'd go through it with the writer and go through it again and say does this hold up you know because I, I described it as a uh, Django movie yeah <laughs> and, truly if one piece doesn't work the movie doesn't work, not just, well, the story kind of, it just, you may as well not shoot it. You can't shoot it. So to to keep track of everything I had to keep track of, and then at the same time, I hope mostly, you know, that it's all making sense and it will work in the end. You know, the, the little twist and all the things like that will work in the end. Uh, uh, like I say, thinking back, I go, ooh, I don't know if I would do this again. Because, you know, you had to play dementia but not all the time and then you had to in the back of your head say is this working and does the story make sense and i'm at, am i you know like every role am i in the right spot at the right time you know you know down the road in the movie you go wait should my character be right about here and sometimes that's a guess right sometimes right. you go i think i think i'm here right now so so like that but it, if it didn't if one little thing doesn't work it doesn't work You have a very rare form of dementia. How much time do I have? Weeks, not months. I'm sorry. That's okay, Doc. Even if I hated you for telling me, I'd forget soon enough. Um, but I gotta ask you, James, so I've always loved your work and, I, and I've always thought you were great, and, and, and but I'm not used to seeing you in a role like this. And it reminded me a little bit of when I was young seeing Michael Keaton in this great movie called Clean and Sober that I remember was a movie that I really loved when I was young, even though I was way too young to watch it. But it was great watching you in this movie because it, it really felt like I hadn't seen the side of you before and I thought you were amazing. And I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how intense you were in it. Well, first of all, it's really nice of you to say. And um, yeah, I, I um, this was, I don't know, I try to the best of my ability and my opportunity, I try to you know, I don't try, I try to avoid the easy path. Um, sure. I want to be a part of um, projects that excite me, that challenge me and and um, and working with, you know, guys like this. I mean, it's just like, you know, bucket bucket list career stuff. Um, but um, I knew it would be challenging. I knew it would be something that uh, was uh, different than I'd really ever explored before creatively. And, and um, but it spoke to me, it sort of resonated on a on a level of just being a father, you know, is the situation that Miles is in with his with his daughter and uh, the discovery of what's going on there, and you know, our our uh, ability and recognition that, that we're fallible as human beings and that we you know have the capacity to make massive mistakes, and and you know maybe switching it then to this father son dynamic between Michael's character and mine, it was uh, I just thought it was really. Um, the type of writing, the type of film you just don't see anymore. And no, I think you're completely. You know I mean? right. And I was like, I want to be a part of this in some capacity, and um, so I was. I was really excited. I knew that this is not really my wheelhouse, but it was. Uh, um, you know, it's one of those things that if it if it strikes a chord with you and you you feel it, you you just want to. How do I how, how do I get to be a part of this? Well, that kind of leads me into my next question for you, Michael. Actually, because what I what I really liked about it also was that for a crime movie, for a noir movie. 
the casting wasn't necessary. like it was it was it was i wouldn't it was off the beaten path right it was kind of more unexpected there were more interesting parts even like ray mckinnon at the beginning like that didn't go the way i thought it was gonna go and it was and it was really and it was like not what you'd see in a noir movie usually where he's kind of like you know like it felt more real more human everybody in the movie was like that though especially pacino you know i've, I've seen movies like this before but doing something very different and I always thought you guys had maybe worked together before, but then I was looking at your filmography and I, I couldn't find anything. How did you assemble the cast? Because it was amazing. Um, I can't remember if I said this during the time or not, but it, you know, like I said, I, I, I tended to wait and really ruminate a little bit and kind of then forget about it. Change his role or every role I go, you know, let me think, you know, maybe you know, people were getting pretty nervous, including myself. And I said, I think I, I think I got it. I think I know who and I just go boom. And after that, and and then you hope that it works, you know, because they might say, oh, I'd love to, but I'm working or I have no interest in this or whatever. That's it. So so the cast was handpicked and um, uh, in the case of Al, this sounds kind of not arrogant, but kind of stupid on my part. I hesitated because I thought, uh, is that exactly right? And also being realistic, is he going to do this? You know, I mean, we had known each other a little bit and enjoyed each other's company and had a lot of respect for each other and stuff, all that stuff. But we, I thought, he, you know, if he says no, because I've waited, I better, if he's a no, who am I going to get? And so, <laughs> so uh, we had a talk. He doesn't say yes right away. Nobody does. <laughs> and, and nor should they. And so then we, uh, talked and you know he turns it turns out to be so easy that you can't believe it here's the thing you know you know i'm trying to parcel this out because we have so much to talk about all these guys never had the advantage the entire cast never had the advantage of a read through well wow really I you kicked know, around a couple of scenes i said let's just i think actually james might have said do you mind if we read a couple of these scenes but besides that, he didn't have a he, he never had a read through. He never had a, a long discussion or or a, say, you know, OK, let's get the wardrobe. Let's have wardrobe meetings. There was none of that. There was none of that. He didn't have the luxury of any of that stuff. It was I think you got it right. You got it. And I go, yeah, I, I said, because I'm good. He goes, all right, let's go make it. And then next thing I know, maybe a week goes by and then James shows up on the set. And there we go. We're, we're off, you know, uh, that's why I thought I know this guy. Well, I'll talk about him. He's going to vomit by the end of the day <laughs> oh no it gets so sickening after a while but i have so much to say about him. so no i do truly have so much to say about him so uh so i'm not in a way i'm not surprised and i never went oh my god thank god because i knew they were all solid i knew they were all solid you know the only thing with that guy like al is he's so iconic and it it could go so many ways and i don't even mean bad it could go it could go a bunch of ways but this is a guy who's done more than all of us put together and he could have a point of view on the day and i might go okay wow i gotta really rethink that and i didn't have the time to rethink that so i don't know it just worked all of us it just worked it's good cast. my god this cast is so good the amazing cast <laughs> He's the best. I'm a, like I'm a I'm a Ray McKinnon fan, man. You know, like guys oh, he's like, really good at the, in that in that part of the beginning. I thought that was just didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, and it was really really cool. As an actor, he like he'll say actors, guys like that. We go, oh, man, Ray McKinnon, yeah. you kid. And I had a little scene with him in uh, uh, Dope Sick. Oh, so I got to know him. Yeah, and I said I love this guy. He's love so Dope Sick. He was a writer. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Okay. And I think he's so directed dope. a little theater down yeah. in North Carolina or something. One yeah. of those guys you watch and you go, he can't be an actor. Yeah. No. no he's, yeah. he's this guy. He's too good. Yeah. He's, he's so good that you almost take him for granted. I think people like that with a lot of character actors. Um, last question I want to ask you guys, because I like a mixture of genres and this one doesn't fit neatly into a genre. Is it harder though nowadays to get a movie like this made than it used to be kind of in the 80s and the 90s when I used to see a lot more stuff like this? Answer that is yes. Yeah, James knows how hard it is. You know, just because he's only acting in the movie, he knows how all this works. Yes, and the best thing you said was it doesn't fit into any genre because honestly, I didn't think about it like that. I just, I just said I, I can't tell you what kind of movie it is. I said I don't know. It's just a story I want to tell. I think I think I know how to tell it. It's pretty interesting. It's really that simple. 
it, it just feels like everybody's so risk averse. You know, wants to take chances. If it's a giant Marvel three hundred million dollar yeah, movie, yeah. or a tiny little movie that's, or, or an animated movie for kids, and just you don't get this kind of content anymore. And and I imagine it's yeah, it's really difficult to get it made. So yeah, I'm super proud of it. Yeah. I'm glad that hopefully we start a trend. Yeah, <laughs> John, good luck. I'd never be like you. And here we are.